Army representative of the Military Vehicle Trust, of which most of these vehicles uh, subscribe to. Currently passing us is a Scammell Explorer, 6x6. The Scammell Explorer was originally fitted with a Meadows six-cylinder petrol engine. This particular vehicle has been re-engined with a 10-litre Cummins diesel to make it a little bit more economical. In its original guise, it would do between three and a half and four miles per gallon on petrol. 6 v 6 vehicle with a selectable front axle, six-speed scanner gearbox, and as you can hear, this sounds rather special with that uh, Cummins 10 litre with no exhaust box fitted in there. Next vehicle is a Scanner Pioneer, it's just going around the back of the arena. This is an R100 Pioneer, originally fitted with a Garmin diesel and still sporting the Garmin diesel. This is approximately 100 brake horsepower and it is a 64 configuration vehicle. So it's not, not a powered front axle, just a gear motor. The unique picture of both the Explorer and the Pioneer is the walking green rear axle. The rear axle has massive articulation, those wheels will lift up and out of the foot. Um, an articulation of each point. Common misconception is that within those cases of the near the walking beam, that there are chains in there. Actually, it's a clear train drive inside those walking beam cases. If you get a chance later on to have a one rover, you can have a look and see that around. Just coming in inside me here is the Foden 66 recovery truck. Foden 66 has a Rolls Eagle diesel engine, 305 brake horsepower, then nine speed full of gearbox behind that with a two speed transfer gearbox. The train on the back of that is rated at 12 tons. Quick stay clear on the train, uh, it's all for the recovery purposes. Behind it is an ex Swedish Army uh, recovery trailer. The, uh, that was brought into this country about 20 years ago when a load of Swedish military vehicles were sold off the one back. Just pulling in beside me here is one of the two Matadors we have in the arena. Matador was an artillery tractor pulling for pulling the five and a half inch artillery gun. Uh, a number of these, well, thousands of these were produced during the Second World War and were mainstay of the uh, Royal Artillery Fleet. Next to us we have a Land Rover 90 uh, mainstay of the uh, British Army transport fleet during the uh, uh, 90, late 80s and the 90s. Um, nice vehicle, quick with the kit on the bonnet there. Next in the lineup we have yes, lovely restoration there. Thank you. Uh, over to Pedal Power now. Uh, what we got here? It is, I'm sure, yeah. Great, nice to see it here. Uh, Pedal Power now. Okay. Alvin Stalwart, next vehicle in our lineup. Stalwart, as I said earlier, was developed during the early 1960s came into production mid-60s and um, uh, one of the features is what they call H-Drive. So all the three wheels on one side of the vehicle are all geared together 
with drive shafts that connect them. Then there's a differential between both sides of the vehicle. Uh, I only learned a couple of weeks ago that this differential is actually a limited slip differential. A lot of these have white lines painted across the end of the hood to ensure that there's no failure of any of the drive shafts on each side of the vehicle. So a white line in the same orientation on each as would normally drawn across the end of the hood. Um, yeah, nice vehicle, five ton light with five ton winch built into the front of the hull. Um, uh, roll B81, 6.5 litre petrol in there. This one's still sporting in petrol. Quite a difficult vehicle to re-engine with a diesel engine because of the compact location of the engine in the hull. I think that concludes our commentary for today on the military vehicles. Um, just having a little bit of a blast round now, getting everybody out of the arena. Thank you very much for your attention.
Yeah, <laughs> <laughs>